Hello, everybody. This is the Essentials of New Jersey Real Estate Chapter 7. We're going to be talking about title and the ownership of real estate. So just so that we clarify, because if you've watched prior chapters, you've seen that we've gone over freehold estates. So we've discussed a fee simple, fee simple absolute, uh, fee defeasible life estate, right, which define the amount of ownership you have and the type of ownership. And now we're going to be talking about how you take title to a property. So title is, it, 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 it is ownership. So it's proof of ownership, okay? So when whenever you have title to a property, kind of like when you're thinking about how you have title to a car, that's proof of ownership, right? Same thing with title. So title is proof of ownership. And then when we talk in later chapters, we're gonna talk about what is sufficient for proof of title, okay? But title in and of itself is, in fact, proof of ownership. And there are several ways in which you or a company, a LLC, LLP, whatnot, could take title to a property. So we're going to talk about that in this chapter. So we're going to go one by one through these. And I'm also going to tell you about some common uh, mistakes, misnomers that people have in regards to trying to understand and trying to delineate between all of these different types, different ways in which we could take title. So the very first way that you could take title to a property is referred to as tenancy in severalty, okay? Tenancy in severalty. Now, a lot of people misunderstand this because what happens is they see tenancy in severalty and what they automatically assume is that it is several people or several companies, okay? They think it's more than one. However, you are entirely misreading this. The actual, what that actually is, tenancy in severalty means that you have severed interest. So your interest is severed from everyone else in the world. Okay, so it means that when you take title in severalty, so you take tenancy in severalty, that means that you are the sole individual owner. There is no one else taking title with you. And just so that we're clear, that is a way in which a company can take ownership in real estate. Okay, so a company, corporation, LLC, LLP could take title to a property in severalty. The next one is referred to as tenancy in common, tenancy in common. So this is more than one individual and or entity, and it allows for a couple of things. It allows for unequal shares of interest, and that's important when we get into joint tenancy and tenancy by the entirety, right? So it allows for unequal shares or interest in the property, okay? So one person could have a 70% interest in the property, another person could have a 30% interest in the property, okay? Um, it also is the very last way in which a company, LLC, LLP, could take um, pro take title to a property. Also, there's a, a other kinds of corporations too. So I'm just kind of, I was painting with a very broad stroke of the pen, okay? So any kind of corporation could take title to a property either in severalty or in common, okay? And there are no requirements to having a tenancy in common other than that of uh, that there's more than one person. Because if there's only one person, there is no option other than to take it in severalty. There is no option for that, right? So... That is the difference between tenancy in common and tenancy in severalty. Again, tenants in common can allow for unequal shares of the uh, interest in the property, okay? And in both of those, you can devise your property. And what does devise mean? Devise is to will real property, right? Devise, D-E-V-I-S-E. -E. So you could devise your real property in either of those. OK, you could sell it, alienate it, all those kinds of things, encumber it. So basically the bundle of rights, OK, you have those, OK, you have those bundle of rights and you can do, like I said, all those things that are come with having the bundle of rights and including devise. Now, I'm, I'm mentioning devise a lot because 
when we go into the next two ways in which you could take title to a property, you basically give up the ability to devise the property, which means to will real property. So in joint tenancy and tenancy by the entirety, you have something called right of survivorship. So let me tell you a little bit about what right of survivorship is. Right of survivorship basically means that if you have ownership in a property, okay, so you have real property and there's ownership in it, and what happens next is one of the individuals dies, because again, this is with individuals, because I told you the only two ways in which a corporation or a company could take a uh, title to a property is in severalty or in common. So when we're talking about joint tenancy or tenancy by the entirety, we won't have a corporation in play. So it's when one of the individuals passes away, dies, okay, their ownership, their piece of the ownership dissolves into the remaining owner or owners, all right? So when we're referring to joint tenancy, when we're referring to joint tenancy, let's talk about what's required to create joint tenancy because there is a requirement to create a joint tenancy other than there being more than one individual. The requirement for joint tenancy is called TTIP, or some people refer to it as PITT. TTIP, I remember it as the four unities, the four unities of what we refer to as time, title, interest, and possession. So let's go through what each of those means. The unity of time means that everyone who is has who purchases the property who goes on title okay has to take title at the same time they have to all be on the same title and they have to acquire it on the same title they have to have the unity of interest meaning that all their interests is interests in the property must be equal and then they need the unity of possession right we said ttip is the acronym that i'm using and the unity of possession is that they come into possession of the property at the same time, okay? So the unity of time, title, interest, and possession is required for that of joint tenancy, okay? And here's the thing, too. The default for two or more individuals is tenants in common. So if you have more than one individual that's going to default. You're going to, by default, take title to the property tenants in common unless you declare that you want to take title to the property as joint tenants, right? So if you declare, hey, I want to take title to the property as joint tenants, we want to take title to the property as joint tenants, okay? And that could be a very common thing. So I'll give you a perfect example of when that would happen. Uh, my wife and I, when we first started dating we were older we were when i say older you're probably going some of you are going to say oh my god you were young uh we were in our late 20s early 30s and we were at a point where she had a career that progressed to the point that it, it warranted her being able to afford her own home so she owned a house okay um and i was at a point in my life where i was ready to purchase my own piece of real estate so we had a couple of options. So let's go through what they were. One of the things that we kicked around was me coming on and ha adding my name to title on the property for the one that she owned that we were going to expand on her little beach house, okay? And that was a possibility. So at that time, if we opted for that option, I wouldn't have been able to have joint tenancy because we do not there's a lot of unities that we would not meet because basically almost all of them accept interest right because what happens is she already took title to the property she already possessed it okay um and we're not taking it at the same time so the only thing that we could have is say hey we have equal interests okay um and that wouldn't have fly to create a new joint tenancy the next one that we could have done was tenants in common. So if we did that, we would have had to have taken title to the property and tenants in common. However, what we did do was we went ahead and we sold her home and we bought a, a larger home, okay? Um, and what happened with that home was that we 
decided we weren't married at the time. Okay. And we're going to get to that. We weren't married at the time and we decided to take title to the property as joint tenants as joint tenants, because we said, okay, if something happens to one of us, we want the ownership of the home to, uh, to dissolve into the other. Okay. So that there's no issues. There's no concerns, nothing like that. Okay. So that is joint tenancy. Now, the next one is tenancy by the entirety. So some people ask, what is the difference between joint tenancy and tenancy by the entirety? As far as a beneficial standpoint, there is no difference because the right of survivorship is the benefit that you get, which is the same in joint tenancy. However, what you need to have in tenancy by the entirety is you need to have the unities of time, title, interest, and possession, as well as the unity of persons, okay? So the unity of persons is that both of the individuals who are taking title to the property are in fact married at the time that they take title to the property. So if you're not married and you are just dating or you are engaged, which my wife, my, my now wife and I were at the time that we purchased our home, we took title to the property as joint tenants, okay? As joint tenants, not tenancy by the entirety, because to us, it was the same thing. There was, there was no difference other than the fact that also tenancy by the entirety, just so you know, if you are taking title to a property and you are married at the time that you take title to the property, that is the default for a married couple, okay? Tenancy by the entirety is the default for a married couple, all right? So that is definitely a big key factor that you want to take into consideration, okay? So last but not least, we have to talk about the difference between a condominium ownership and a cooperative ownership. So a lot of people, when they think condo or condominium, okay, they think of a style of property and they think of a one level um, apartment style living. And that is definitely, if I were talking and referring to a style of property, a style of real property, I would say, yes, that is a condominium and everyone would kind of understand that. So what we need to do is this, we need to actually define what condominium ownership is. So what it is, it's actually typically when you own, and again, I say typically, when you own interior wall to interior wall, okay, and there are common elements that are handled and managed by a homeowners association, there's also a master deed. Um, so a condominium ownership, basically you own a lot of expensive air, okay? Everything on the outside is usually regulated by the homeowners association, and they would be considered common elements on what is referred to as a master deed. Um, now, Condominium ownership could look like a single family home. It could look like a town home. So there's a lot of areas, especially now, there's a lot of parts of our country where you're actually seeing um, basically single family homes in a 55 and over community that what happens is this, you, you actually have single family homes. They look like it, but what happens is the outside, the exterior, all that stuff is managed and maintained by the homeowners association to alleviate any kind of stresses on the homeowner to uh, maintain and handle uh, the property as far as something goes with the exterior maintenance, because that's what a lot of people who are, you know, looking to go into those types of communities, they're like, I want to have that single family feel, but I'm getting older and I cannot take care of a property like I used to. That's a okay. So that would be considered condominium ownership as well, even though it walks, talks, acts, and looks like a single family home. The next one is a cooperative ownership. Now, depending on where you are in the country, you may or may not understand and know what a cooperative is. So a cooperative is basically when you, as the individual, own shares in a corporation, then they give you a proprietary lease based on how many shares you have. So you actually don't have to take title to a property. Unlike condominium ownership, you do take title. There is a deed, okay? And a deed transfers ownership. We'll get into that in later chapters, okay? So a deed transfers title. So title's proof of ownership. There are things that we'll talk about that are proof of title, 
and then there's a deed which transfers title. It just shows that there's a transfer that took place. So in a cooperative, there is no deed. There is no title. You don't actually own real estate. You own shares in a corporation, okay? And that corporation, uh, it's not like Coca-Cola or Pepsi and you own shares of that. And now they give you a proprietary lease for unit 123 on 45 Main Street, okay? That doesn't work like that. The corporation is usually set up that owns just that one building or maybe they might own two, okay? And there's usually a board. And the board approves or does not approve of individuals who buy into the corporation, okay? And you own a lot of expensive stocks, <laughs> you know? That's really what you have. So it, it's quite different. And what happens is typically the reason why people buy cooperatives is because they're typically in areas where the real estate would be much, much, much higher and unaffordable. So cooperatives tend to be, again, painting with a broad stroke of a pen, tend to be a little more affordable. Also, cooperatives typically have a much larger monthly maintenance fee, okay? And the maintenance fee, actually, it isn't a maintenance fee per se. What it is, is it's actually uh, payments of your heat, your water, your sewage, um, all rolled into one, your taxes, because what happens is you don't technically own real estate. It's the corporation that does. And you, as the individual owner of the shares of the corporation, own just a lot of expensive uh, shares in that corporation. And you have a proprietary lease. Okay, so you have a lot of just personality. And guys, that's it for Chapter 7. I hope this helped out. And again, Hit like, hit subscribe, and I will see you guys soon.